Life comes with a lot of decisions, and it can be hard to know the right path sometimes. A therapist can help you map out what you really want, so you trust yourself to make great choices and feel excited about the future. BetterHelp offers convenient, professional online therapy on your schedule, however you want it, by phone, chat, or video call. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash positive today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash positive. Commercials are over. Yo, I haven't got all day. 869-1240. Time to get busy. This is Sports Daily on KFH. Welcome back, everybody. Sports Daily. Uh, all right. Chiefs. Kelsey's throwing blows out there. Uh, it's hot. Kelsey says after he threw, uh, is with his left, uh, Jack Cochran, a backup linebacker who's trying to just, you know, rip one away. He was shoving around a little bit a day earlier. Kelsey says, got to be a better teammate, got to be a better leader, plain, plain and simple. Um, I, I, I don't care, Tommy. I mean, training camp, shoving, pushing, fighting. I get it. You're like in the Chiefs situation. It's hot. You're in a dorm room. Like, it's going to be miserable out there. I, I would hate this time of year if I was an NFL, especially an NFL veteran, right? Because you know, you're like, you're, you're like, God, I don't need to be here and this sucks. And like, I, uh, I'm living this like Hollywood lifestyle and, and, you know, I'm a Hall of Fame player and I got to come out here and sweat it out. And here's this scrub trying to like strip one away and impress the coaches like get off me dude like I get it I get it but he owned it as he should and you know it's just that time of year I think and and Andy Reid says don't do it you get hurt and everything else but he gets it I mean this is this is no big deal yeah I don't have an issue with it at all it's gonna get chippy in training camp I I mean I feel like you're getting these guys into the mindset of basically warfare right like that's what it comes down to when you get into the regular season and you know it's hot out there um, I'm sure that guys like Travis Kelsey who have been around as long as he has are like man I, I gotta keep doing this every single August July August like it's hot uh, and then I've got these guys that are backups that are you know trying to punch the ball out and they're getting chippy with me and then I'm trying to fight back it is what it is um, I, I did think that that Kelsey owned it pretty well um, you okay. know, when it was all said and done, really, I think the biggest thing, and th- there have been a couple of situations like this throughout training camp, it's gotten chippy with Patrick Mahomes, or he's been in the middle as trying to break up some things. And I'm just like, man, like, don't get him hurt. Like, you know, I, I understand chippiness. I understand competitiveness, all of that. But let's just avoid any other injuries as we get closer to the season. Um. I, I, if one of these fights ever led to an injury, it'd be a big problem. And I don't remember yep. that ever happening. That's the one thing where you're like, and, that, and Travis Kelsey throwing one punch is a good, but if it leads to a scuffle and then somebody, right. Uh, it gets hurt. They get their uh, hands Mike, stepped on or they get, you know, I don't know. Yeah, Mike, by the way, chimes in on the video stream with a well-placed timing, not getting the girl's phone number didn't help either. Travis Kelsey famously just totally shot down while trying to share phone numbers with Taylor Swift, which was a funny story. Yeah, that probably didn't help, Mike. It probably a little frustration boiled over. Uh, here's Speaking of the frustration, just a time of year. Uh, so we mentioned this before the break. Steve and Ted getting some uh, audio from an interview with Mitch Holt this did. Is right. It was Mitch Holt this sitting down with Andy Reid, correct? So this is probably audio you haven't heard. This wasn't a part of like daily press briefings. Uh, Jad, do I have that correct? This was more of an exclusive one on one between Mitch and Andy. Okay. So Steve and Ted are going to get some of this. We're going to play it for you as we get it. Jad will cut that out. So here's uh, here's Andy Reid with Mitch Holtis and talking about just just the grueling nature of this part of the year. There's a there's a physical part of it. There's a mental part getting through camp, knowing the plays. When you're tired, you've got ten installs basically, and and you've got a you know you have to master those. That's both sides of the ball. So you've got to stay sharp when you're tired, physically beat up. You're building a foundation really for January and hopefully February. And uh, and so at the latter part of the latter quarter of the season into the playoffs, if you're lucky enough to get there, 
um, then you've got this foundation this, that you can you can bank on. And then the early part of the season when it's hot, you're going to be in good enough condition where you can get through those games and you're not worried about being hot and tired. You're going to be able to work through it and, and play your best game and give you an opportunity to, to do what you do best at, at playing. I love, Tommy, that Andy Reid still has that old school nature. in him. Because, by the way, I believe it. Um, I think it's true. I think that, you know, this time of year, you know, it was always interesting when you'd have everybody going to pretty much like the most beautiful weather they could for training camp. And I, I suppose I get that from a fan's perspective and making a spectacle. But the reality is, like for the team, it is kind of better to acclimate to the elements as quickly as you can. Like it's hot in the NFL season for really the first six to eight games of the year for a lot of these, you know, for a lot of these teams. And it does sort of matter. You got to be careful in the heat, right? Like I, I there's a, there's a yeah. component of that too. But you, know, you practice in a dome all the time, and then you go out to a ninety degree game. Why do you think Miami has such a home field advantage early in the season, right? Guy, that you, well, just, you yeah. just can't get used to it. I mean, kind of the same way on the opposite side when you're playing in yeah. Green Bay in January. You know, like it, it, that's really difficult to do. Um, I mean, Andy Reid is known for putting on grueling training camps. That's just kind of what he's known for. And I like the the thought of that. I like the conditioning part of that. I mentioned it, I think it was last week when we were talking about training camp. And, and I said, you know, I feel like there are always going to be a handful of guys that show up to training camp not ready to go for the season. You've got guys like Patrick Mahomes that, you know, he's training all year round. And uh, I know that there are a lot of other players like that. But you've got the handful of players that are probably extremely talented, but they haven't really done anything during the off season. You know, they vacationed, they've spent time with family, they, they've taken time off. I'm totally on board with that. I get it, but they may not be in the best conditioning shape re and be ready to go for the regular season. That's what training camp is for to get you back to game speed. There's a big difference between NFL training camp and major league baseball spring training. Those two things are completely different. You know, they put spring training in, you know, warmer locales because it's kind of a tourist destination, right? Like people go and watch spring training and it's not really grueling, right? Like it's, you're just kind of, I mean, it's, it's a different sport entirely training camp, yeah. at least for Kansas city. Like it is, you know, full go all the time battling the heat. And these guys are, are, are as competitive as you will see them during the entire year. It's so funny too, because we'll hear, you'll see people like criticize that kind of stuff and Andy Reed and, how long he plays players in the preseason and how you know grueling these and you're like guys they've they've won two super bowls in the last you know little right. while here like i i think that at some point you have to get out there and play football and yeah it's uncomfortable but it's okay like that's just a part of it and we don't you know we don't think and and these things are far less grueling than they used to be through CBAs and everything else but it's like there's a reason for it you think Andy Reid like, I don't know how much you guys know about Andy Reid, but you think he wants to stand out there <laughs> in that heat all day and sit there and sweat? No. Like, he's not built for it, right? He's old. Uh, he loves cheeseburgers, like, all that stuff. Like, I, I don't think he wants to be out there either. But he does, but he is because it's important, and, and it is important. And Travis Kelsey's fine, and there's no, like— and I don't think, and let's be clear, I haven't heard anybody overreacting to Travis Kelsey, by the way. It's just, it's out there. And it, it, you know, until we get into the preseason here in 14, 14 days, is it August 13th? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's going to be, we're going to get these kinds of stories. And then you yeah. get to hit somebody else and everything's fine. And then it's like, but, but the other part of it is, as we've learned with Joe Burrow and a number of other guys, you just sort of hold your breath right now, right? Like you just hold your breath. Can you make it through this first part of camp with no injuries, through the non-contact stuff, and then you're there? Like, and once you get to the preseason games, I feel like, because once the games are on, guys are going to get hurt. That's football. There's nothing you can do about it. It's the ones that are sort of non-contact this time of year where you're like, Ugh, let's be careful. Yeah. It is different, though, Tommy, than when you have joint practices and teams fight each other. Right. Those That's things happen. Yeah. It is, and they and they have really pulled back. There's not very many of those anymore. Uh, and that's probably a good idea. That's what you don't want to have happen, right? Like that's that's far more than just a swing occasionally thrown at another guy. 
and you got a guy like Jack Cochran, you know, the the one that was on the receiving end of the punch from Travis Kelsey. He's trying to battle for a roster he didn't spot. Do anything wrong, right? He's making it, trying to make an impression. Maybe didn't make the best one, but he's going up against the best tight end in the NFL. You know, and so you're going to do everything that you can to stand out and make an impression so you can make the roster. Because th- that's the other thing about training camp. When you're going full go and it's grueling and it's hard and competitive and all of that, keep in mind at the very end of all of it, you start to trim down the roster some. And you start looking at guys that, you know, maybe didn't have a great training camp or, you know, maybe they weren't in very good, you know, condition to be ready for it or they weren't making plays. They, they didn't make an impression. You got to stand out a little bit, uh, especially those fringe players that may or may not make the roster. And so we're getting closer to that point now too, uh, where I think the conversation will start to begin about who's going to make the team and who's not. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not as interested in that stuff most of the time, uh, but I think there are positions where that's interesting this year, especially. So it is really the hardest part of training camp right now to me because there is nothing we're going to see tangibly except for bad things, right? That Maybe that's not true with the Chiefs in the wide receiver position. Maybe there are things we want to see work out in camp, but you really kind of just need to get to the games. Really just kind of need to get to the games, and then I'd rather see the wide receivers working there anyway because um, they will need to work. Like, they're going to have to work, whether it's with Patrick Mahomes or whatever, those – you know, eight possessions we see out of Patrick Mahomes this preseason feel like they're pretty important, you know, for as important as things get for a team that's as experienced and, you know, uh, much of a winner as the Chiefs are. All right, let's let's uh, let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll give something away. Uh, we'll probably give away some HTO on the other side of the break here. I do want to get into the Royals. Royals fans, hang in there. I know you're angry today because the Nicky Lopez trade makes absolutely no sense. Man, I'm with you. It didn't make any sense to me either. Uh, But we'll get into that, look at some other deals happening at the Major League Baseball trade deadline as well, coming up in hour number two. But uh, get ready. We'll give away some some HCO on the other side. Wrap up hour number one. The IHOP hotline is open for you, 869-1240 at Sports Daily. All Brockton Caster. We'll be right back. 